Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I'm going to be showing you how to build a microcontroller to prevent unnecessary yawing of the helicopter unless you want it. Now this is a problem I have in many of my helicopters and here with the development of the RX318, I decided I'm finally going to tackle it. To understand how we're going to be doing this, we're going to be using the angular speed sensor. Now that pretty much displays our speed in rotations per second. So if I go ahead and connect that to this display here and connect this to this rotational velocity pivot, you're gonna see how this works. Right now, everything's stopped, everything's zero. If we give it some speed, you can see here, well, this is giving us an angular speed and we can kind of apply that and it's the rotation. Now this is an intermediate tutorial, probably beginner intermediate because some of these things are very simple concepts. Stay tuned for my other videos where I'll be showing you how to build a simple helicopter, how to build a tandem rotor helicopter such as this, and how to build a coaxial rotor helicopter, one that has two rotors on top of one another. So you can see the helicopter is rotating around its point, it's kind of spinning or yawing. And if you hold Alt, you actually have preset parameters, you can kind of make your keyboard keys or trim them so they're, pur they're purposely always applying a value. So take a look at this, I'm holding Alt, I moved my left and right arrow keys, and now it's saying 0.13. Now I got it to stop spinning with 0.13, but keep in mind that is RPS dependent. If I turn on heavy lift mode, my RPS starts to increase, and my helicopter starts to spin in the other direction. So now, I actually have to go and set a different trim value, and if I put it to zero, take a look at how fast we start spinning. So it is purely dependent on RPS and even still setting a trim like that is not necessarily the best way or work around this. Yes, I've done it and my other helicopters actually still have that, but I prefer something else. So what we'll need is the velocity or angular speed sensor and you'll need to place that somewhere in the center point of your creation. It doesn't do to put it up here because that's not the point we're spinning around. So you'll want to find the point the helicopter is actually spinning around. And in our case, this is pretty much that center point between the two rotors. Next, we'll grab the empty microcontroller I always talk about. And inside this empty microcontroller, you're only really going to need three nodes. You need one that is the input value of the velocity or speed or angular speed. And then you'll need a number input from your controls. So yaw controls. And you'll need one that is yaw out. And that is the value that you end up creating based on these two inputs. So you can arrange it nicer, but pretty much those are the starting points. And once you find them here, arrange them such like this. So you have the angular speed, yaw controls and yaw out. Extremely easy microcontroller we're using here. You just have to know how a PID works, or even if you don't know how it works, just to know the basic premise of it. It's trying to set using this process variable. So whatever you set here, this number is going to be trying to adjust. Now you have an on and off active switch here, but pretty much what we're going to want to do is take our angular speed here. And what I tend to do because the value is so small from it, it's like 0 0.0001, just apply a function and multiply it. So X multiplied by 10, just get it a little bit larger. And that's what can go into our process variable. Now set point can remain zero, so you don't have to attach anything to it. And then you'll need your yaw controls. Now the yaw controls are the one you're actually using. So what I recommend you do is take a threshold function apply that and you'll want to set it to something like 0.1 for example because those controls once it's 0.1 that means you're no longer trying to turn so negative 0.1 and 0.1 and attach that to the active right there so that's going to activate this pid now inside the pid what we're going to do is set a proportional of one we'll set an integral of 0.01 and a derivative gain of four. I just kind of tested. Now you may want to change the numbers for your creation, but those are the ones that work for me. And last but not least, to actually change these, we need a switch box that again is attached to this exact same thing. So when the 
yaw controls are zero pretty much when it's between this and this then we need this to be activated so then that's the on um, route and then this goes to the yaw out what is when it's off meaning when when these values are not zero well it's actually the yaw controls themselves so very very simple microcontroller here that's all we have it is possible that those numbers for the PID controller were too aggressive, so if you find that your helicopter is kind of shaking uncontrollably, you can tune it down. Now you'd go with 0.1 for the proportional, 0.01 for the integral, and 1 for the derivative, and hopefully this sorts things out. I actually put the same microcontroller in the 118 as I had in the large one, the 318, and it started shaking, so tune it down just a little bit. So you don't have to understand the PID controllers or PIDs, but just use those values. You'll need to select the data nodes here, and you'll need to apply it or add it into your path. Now, I have a very complex path here, but you could see I have the stabilized yaw coming out there in this microcontroller. So if I follow this path, here is this one, and here's one coming out of my autopilot controller so I can make this one come in here to yaw controls and I'm just going to splice it in like that now you may not have this you may have some other controls but pretty much it's just spliced in and angular goes to the angular speed right there I'm just gonna put an ugly dial here so I could see exactly what's happening and that's coming out of my yaw out so right there just to sort of see that this microcontroller is working properly so right now I'm just starting the engines up, but you can see here the value is very small, so realistically that will do nothing to the yawing or spinning. But if I gain some altitude right now, you can see that we are getting slight left kind of yawing. But now with this, it's stabilized. Now you can see right there, in relation to that mountain, we're not spinning. And I don't have, well I could actually remove this, so hold that alt, remove that there, and it stays the same because you're applying, as long as you're applying less than that 0.1 factor, you're not going to be spinning. Now if I try to yaw, if I hold the arrow key left, yeah, it yaws. The second I let go, I'm not yawing, the helicopter will stop it and kind of start to hold its yaw position. So it does act a little jerky, I suppose, but when you let go and you're not trying to yaw anymore, it will stop and hold that position. Now you're not spinning around, and if you turn on heavy lift mode or change your RPS, the only thing that changes is this value on the dial. It doesn't change or affect anything. Now heavy lift mode does cause my helicopter to go upwards, so I don't want to hit into the roof there, but in essence, it keeps the position of where the helicopter is facing dead straight. So. That's just a very, very simple microcontroller, very simple way to control your helicopter um, from kind of yawing out of control. Keep in mind, you can use that exact same microcontroller for other things as well. This microcontroller is good for depth holding. It's good for a lot of other stuff that you can set. I will make other tutorial videos for those specific things, but if you can, if you can use your imagination, and for example, set a set point that is the depth you want to hold of a submarine, then it works the exact same way. Another extremely useful one that I find is to kind of keep heading, hold heading on a boat to prevent the boat from moving around. If you're just trying to go straight, meaning you're not holding the controls, you can actually make your uh, rudders steer for you to counter wind and other things. So you'll do it using a very similar microcontroller. But let me know in the comments what microcontrollers interest you. I've heard people tell me autopilots. I've heard people, well, very simple kind of heading hold autopilots, not the complex ones that I don't even bother making. I've heard people, you know, want depth hold functions and features, other sort of PID comparisons, when to use a PID versus when to just use a simple threshold function with a logic gate, things like that. So I kind of want to hear it. I, I do have some other tutorial videos planned for us and I will be making them. But overall, the very simple ones like how to make a working cruise control in a car. That's another one I've heard and I will actually do it. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more videos, for content, for creations. And as always, happy stormworksing, everyone. See you next time.